good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class, Making Something Out of Nothing. It's all about upcycling and recycle crap. Excuse me. Thanks again for joining MSOON, the acronym for Making Something Out of Nothing. My name is Kimberly Wright. Thanks for joining today. Uh, today we're gonna get right into our lesson. Um, I guess first I wanna give you all just a couple of minutes if you need to get in, anybody a chance to get in the class. Does anyone have any uh, of the show and tell fun palm art ideas that they wanted to share today? If you want to do that in the latter part of our class, we can, but you know, it's up to you. You can do that next week. All right, we're going to get right into our lesson. So first, I'm going to put on my apron. Just because I'm working with Plasto Paris today. I think I'm going to turn it on the other side. I hope you all have had a chance to finish up to this point of the foil and the uh, tape as it pertains to finishing that portion of the piece. If you need gloves, you can go ahead and get gloves. Um, I'm not basically even touching the plastic of Paris right now. Right. You might also want to have a pair of gloves for after the class, a second pair. All right. So for today, I have a, if you need to unmute yourselves to ask questions, feel free to do so. I have this bucket and I have some cold water. When you are mixing plaster of Paris, it is best to use cold water. You would probably think that warm or hot water would be best, but it 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 it, it quickens the process, the drying process time if you use hot water. You want to use cold water because cold water slows the process of the drying time of the plaster of Paris. Even if it's not ice cold, long as it's cold, like it was running from under the sink. And so I have a few cups just to measure out all of my materials first. I'm going to open up my plastic pair. I have about three cups. You don't have to put it like this, but what you do have to do is put the water into your container that you are actually mixing in first. The water needs to be there first. So I'm just taking my time to open this box. All right. Some people like to use gloves. Some people like to use even some type of mask that some will take dust particles in their face. I have like a, a half a cup measuring cup, but I'm going to measure out. Measure that right off the top, and I'm putting that inside one of the cups. 
Uh, Tim, did you say a half a cup of water? Yes. So you always use two parts plaster of Paris to one part water. So we have two halves of the Flask of Paris and one half of water. Two parts Flask of Paris to one part water. Now, I don't know, like once again, I had just this t-shirt. I feel like this amount of mixture is going to be able to uh, make the one half of the shirt soluble you know, for me. And before I mix that, I'm just going to move my water, get a clear, clean space. I have my two parts plastic pairs, one part water. And uh, once again, too, I have a butter knife to mix, so an old uh, paintbrush stick. You can use a stick from outside, whatever you feel comfortable. You can even, you don't even have to use something to mix it. I'll show you when you, all you have to do is coagulate or move the, the pan to actually mix it as well. All right, before I begin to actually mix, because you want to be mindful of the drying time. If you have anything that you need to set up or do before that, like prepare your fabric, go ahead and do that because the, the actual, um, Plaster Paris starts to set in about 20 to 30 minutes. So, so far, even though I had this half a t-shirt, I see I have the back of it with this uh, tag. I'm going to go ahead and grab the front of it. And before I begin, I think I want to cut off the sleeves. Even though I'm going to use the sleeves, I just want to make a straight, clean piece of product.
then I can use, maybe I can use that for something else as it pertains to her, her uh, design of dress. So I cut off one sleeve and I'm cutting the other one off and my fabric is pretty much ready and I'm ready to mix my plaster of Paris. So as you can see, I cut the sleeves off. Here are my sleeves. All right, gonna clean up a bit. And now, what you're going to do is gonna change the angle. the water into my pan, whatever type of bowl, plastic bowl or something that you have. And as you can see, my bowl is so big that the water barely even covers the bottom. So I'm just going to like sort of hold it to the side and I'm going to slowly take the plastic Paris and just start to drizzle it over the water. and start to sort of move the water around as it mixes. Going slowly and as it dissolves. So I finished with that cup. I'm gonna move this around a bit. You see, I'm kind of staying on one end because I don't need to just go all over the whole end of the container. Then I'm gonna go ahead and drizzle the other half in and move the mixture around still so as to when the mixture, the plaster of Paris hits the water, it starts to dissolve. Okay, you want to maintain about that much just for the proper, now I'm gonna mix it around a bit, for the proper mixture and the actual hardening effect. Just making a slurry. Mine is a little bit thick, although I'm not really adding that much water. I'm just adding just a drop. If you want to add just a drop, feel free. I just wanted to make it mine a little bit more liquidy so I can really soak it into my cloth. And as you can see, My mixture is there. Okay, the next thing you want to do is have my newspaper to cover a portion of your area where you're working so that you don't really make any big mistakes or big messes. And I'm grabbing my styrofoam to actually sit the, the actual 
lady sculpture on. I'm going to cut this in half so I can use one half for one of my figurines and another half for the other one. So I'm sitting that there. That's what she's going to sit on while she's drying. Mixing some more. And now I'm going to, I'm going to cover this piece right here. I'm going to take my cloth along with the sleeve side that I cut the sleeves off of and I'm going to add it to the mixture and just start to actually get it all mixed up in there. But I don't want to rinse my hands in the sink like that. Uh, Tim. Are we supposed to use the whole t-shirt or half the t-shirt? Right now, I was using half the t-shirt because if you use the whole t-shirt, you're not going to have enough uh, <laughs> mixture. Uh -oh. Okay. Probably like half the amount. But what I did was I went to, I did not wash my hands under the sink because I don't want that plastic of Paris to get in my uh, drain. In my drain, yes. So what I did was went and got a cold cup of water and just poured it over my fingers in my mixture to still soak my, as you can see, to soak my cloth a little bit more. For me, it was a little bit dry. So if you have to add a little water, feel free. And this is how it looks. It's just soaked. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and squeeze this half of the t-shirt out. All right, I don't want it dripping, but I still want some of the mixture in the t-shirt. And so I'm just going to sit this here for a second and use that wet washcloth to wipe my hands off. Right now you can see my mixture here with the, the actual sleeves from the t-shirt. I'm moving that to the side and opening up my push pins. So if you don't have push pins, you can use some type of clips or just basically whatever you have. Kind of hard to open this. I finally got it open. All right. So I have my push pins open, and I'm just going to kind of like take a few out so I don't have to be wrestling with them while I am working on my cloth. I'm going to turn the camera around here. And so that this particular piece doesn't just 
scorch her eyes and could have moved her out of her way. So as it pertains to the design of the clothing, that's entirely up to you. But I'm just going to actually show you what I was going to do to wrap this particular piece. I think I'm going to start to Uh, make sure the line is in the inside and maybe start to wrap like a wrap skirt, wrap this around her waist and start to make pleats. But the first wrap here, just so it doesn't move, I'm going to pin it. All right, I'm coming back around to the front. And I want to start to pleat back and forth like so, so as to make the cloth hang a certain kind of way. I think I'm going to take a pen and pin those pleats. So now is the time to basically work on your design because of course it's going to take about a day or two for the plastic Paris and the fabric to dry completely. But this is partly still starting with your drying time. And you want to take advantage of the design aesthetic. So as you can see, I'm making the pleats and it's starting to kind of make a pleat design going around. I'm going all the way around the dress with my pleats or, or the waistline. Kim, I'm sorry, did you start from the waist or from the bust? I'm up at the waistline. The bust are right here. Okay. I'm at the waistline. Okay. I am still making pleats. I'm halfway around the waistline but I am still adding the pins, sticking the pins where the foil and tape will allow me. Continue to turn my piece as I go around. And making a few more pleats at the back of her waistline, going around to the left side. Now you can see just from turning that t-shirt, she has on a full wrapped around gown as it pertains to the bottom portion. All right. So I'm just making sure to fix my cloth open where you can, um, where the bottle can still sit flat on the surface. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap this cloth around. I'm actually 
be twirling it all the way around. I'm stretching the clock up so that it can fit in her hand from the bottom longest portion like she's holding it. I don't know if I want to keep the cloth here or flip this back out to make that. I think we're going to keep that flipped out. That looks better. So for right now, I'm just going to put a pin in the portion of the cloth where her hand is holding the cloth. It might weight the body down some just because of the weight of the cloth, but after it dries, you know, it'll stand back up. Before you allow it to dry all the way, just make sure you position the cloth where you actually want it to lie. Now I'm going to take one of those t-shirts, oh, sorry, the actual, uh, I'm going to take the actual sleeve from the t-shirt to see if I can fashion her some type of, uh, piece to go over her breast area. So I'm laying this piece of t-shirt over her shoulder, like so. I'm going to stretch it across from her right shoulder. I'm stretching it across her left breast, going around her back. And then I'm going to come back up and stretch it across her right breast. A portion of her chest. I have to make a little fold in the back. So what I can do is just lift this up, put it over there, put that on top. And so what I'm going to do is pin that down. the pin to the shoulder piece. The plaster Paris had so much time to sit that this is basically sticking to her body. I still want to pin it down for when it begins to dry that it won't just unravel up. It'll actually stay down, conform to her body or the figure form.
So I'm just making sure to shape my cloth if needed for this dry. Using another pan to put in the back. to help her back stand up while that weight is drying and holding her down. The arm will come up back up on its own. So I'm just gonna kind of like sit that to the side for a few seconds just to look at it. If you want to add some cloth at any time i think probably now would be the best time oh so now i think i would go ahead and use my last piece of cloth if your plastic paris has solidified you know you can get some more water and uh, sort of just pour a little bit more water on it not too much to revitalize it or re-moisten it i'm using that last piece of cloth to make a head wrap for her a headdress for her head. All right, don't be too hard on yourselves. So I'm gonna bring her a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. I have my piece of cloth from the the actual uh, sleeve and I'm just holding the corner over so as to make it more of a rectangular piece. I'm going to use a short end, place it on her head, and just start to bring the short end around to close it off and just start to wrap and wrap around her head like so. Then I'm going to pin that. You have to be, be patient and just find a space or place that it will speak down on. I just want to pin it in one area so it doesn't come loose as it dries. Then I'm going to shape the top of the wrap by pushing the inside in just to give it an enclosure. And this is how that looks. All right, so I'm setting her down And I'm moving all of that to the side. And I'm going to get a little bit more cold water. I'm going to rinse my hands over this bucket, but also mix this plastic of Paris just a little bit. I want to only want to use a little bit of water. You don't want to dilute it too much. Let's see if we can get that mixed up a bit. So that we don't waste our plastic of Paris, we can use this portion just as an experiment to see how the project will come out. I'm remixing that. I'm 
what I'm going to do is take one or two of my rubber gloves and put this plaster of Paris inside the glove to make a mold of the hand for a project. But what I have to do first is just make sure to make a slurry out of this and get it all up from the bottom. So I'm going to put one of these gloves inside this cup and fold the glove over the actual mouth of the cup. Like so. Making sure that all of the cement or the plastic pairs is up from the container. I want to mix just a little bit to get that out. If you have enough for two gloves, go ahead and fill two gloves, but if you only have enough for one, half of one, see what you can create. All right, I'm going to slowly pour this mixture into this glove. Taking my time so as not to pour it so fast that I see it overrunning. If it becomes sort of full, you want to take your time, just stop there and just shake the glove around a little bit. So it can get down in the fingers of the glove. All right, I want to. Pull that back some so we can get some more space to pour more of the mixture into the glove. I think I'm going to take mine completely off now. but I still have the thumb to feel. So I'm just gonna carefully hold this open and continue to feel it. Now it's time you're making a mess. Still shaking my plastic pairs down. Everything all right? Yes. So none of my plastic pairs has gone into the glove, uh, the thumb of the glove yet. That's why I'm continuing to scrape my bowl, my container to get more out as much as I can. Each time I pour it into the glove, I shake it down, as you can see. And I actually forced some to go over into the 
thumb side. Now I'm going to sit that back down into my cup gently to get the last amount of the plastic Paris in the glove. So we essentially just did two projects in one today with the remainder of the plastic Paris. Well, all, anytime we make something with plastic Paris, we'll have something to do with it so as not to waste it, to utilize our full amount of the box or the container. All right, so that's all I think I can get out of there. I'll probably end up rinsing it outside with my uh, water holes and the, use that, couldn't let that cement run out on the ground. So I still have a little bit of water to cleanse my hands. Just pouring the water over my hand. And I'm gonna wipe them down with this washcloth. I still have not washed my hand in the sink. I don't want to get that plastic Paris in my drain to clog it. And as you can see, I have my glove filled with the remainder of the solution of half plastic Paris. I'm going to shake it down evenly and tie a knot into the glove but first take as much air as I can out so that I can actually tie the knife. Maybe if you can't tie a knot, maybe you can get a, a twisty tie. Do the best you can. All right, so I have the best knot that I'm possibly able to have. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of wipe that off a little. I'm gonna sit this to the side over here on my styrofoam that I have my lady sculpture drying on as well. Now, as far as that piece, I want to just move all of this stuff out of the way. Wipe up any large spills. And now with your sculpture with the hand that you use for the excess solution that you had of plastic Paris, you can make a shape or a gesture, a hand gesture with the fingers. You cannot use a pen to, to keep the fingers where you need them. You have to uh, use something to mount it. So that is my left hand. I'm gonna use two fingers just to make the peace sign. Do I want to do love? Okay, I think I'm going to make the peace sign. Or you can leave the hand just straight out and curve the fingers up for a, for a, a small planter to put a plant in the, in the palm of the hand. It's up to you. All right, so I have made a peace sign with my fingers and cross that that way. Still wiping my hands off. And that's basically all we're gonna do for today due to the fact that once you have shaped your particular cloth, the way you want it. And I may uh, do a little bit to this after class 
just because I want to make sure her arm is the height that I want it and her back is straight up a little bit more uh, upward like so. So I'm probably going to prop that up with some type of stick or something to get it to the height that I want it. If your piece is not looking like you want it and you want to take the time to do that before it completely dries and um, just have fun, uh, do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? So if you don't have any questions, the next class will be all about applying the application of the gold or silver paint, whatever you choose to make the sculpture come to life. And um, that's all we have to do is paint, but right now we have to wait until she dries. So I guess if you uh, join me with those, the step-by-step -step process of mixing the plastic Paris and applying it to the fabric and wrapping it on her, body, then the next thing you're going to be doing is cleaning up. So you have a lot to clean up. And thank you once again for joining. Uh, Kim, one question real quick. Being, what are we going to do with the arms? How are we going to cover the arms? Say that one more time. How are we going to cover the arms? Well, the, the arms are covered with paint, but if you want some type of like, my, my, um, my, sorry, my figurine is more covered Sorry, she's more nude at the waistline in her arms. And if you, I know what you're probably saying, like some of the tape is probably unraveling. If you want to put uh, any type of full length clothing on her body, you're more than welcome to. Uh, you can use, although I'm going to use paint to solidify her arms and I've been using glues uh, to put down any layers of tape, you can use uh, air dry clay to put a layer of clay over her if you like. You can use a thin uh, piece of fabric, but paint will do just as fine as when we get to that stage. Uh, what about Mod Podge? Could, could we put Mod Podge on it? Yes, you can definitely use Mod Podge to seal it, but uh, it's, no, it's no real reason why you have to use gloss unless you just want her shiny, but you don't have to waste your gloss. You can use Mod Podge matte as well, just as long as it's something to help seal and stick it together. Yes. Good. Okay. So you did make, you made the uh, wrap already. We, we were so co concentrating on other stuff, we didn't hear if you made the turban. Yes, I did. You did. So okay. You recorded this. I guess we'll go back and see it. So one of the pieces of the sleeve is what I use to wrap around her chest for the upper part of her, to cover her breast. Uh -huh. And then oh. I use the other part of the sleeve to wrap around her head. Okay. Yes. So once again, too, don't forget that while you are creating art, being creative means to take risks and just try to like apply some different things and show me what you experimented with and came up with for ideas. So you don't have to just stick to my regimen all the way. These are just basic instructions that I give you so that you can uh, flourish and show off your stuff, what you have. And so if you don't have any more questions, we are going to be uh, actually painting this piece next week. I have some metallic gold spray paint here. Although I have silver gold, silver uh, spray, spray paint, I have, if you don't have spray paint, you're more than welcome to use uh, acrylic paint. Um, this piece, I'm pretty much probably going to just uh, apply one color to it. If you want to use multiple colors on your piece, be creative. It's up to you. I'd like to see what you actually come up with your finished products. So thanks again. My name is Kimberly Wright. Thank you so much for yeah. joining. Yes. Do you want to see my hands? <laughs> you know, the things that we did last week with the hands. Oh, yes, I'd love to. So anybody have a Let's see what we should have. 
Last week we created our fun, calm uh, thing so much. I, I said it. I didn't know if y'all want to say that to the end because I know you might mess up some stuff where your hands already got so messed up. Last week we created a mouse, a penguin, an ear of corn, and an octopus. That doesn't mean that you have to show all of them, but do you have any pieces that you want to share, anybody out there? Just, just one. Okay. I don't know if I'm, can you see it? Oh, but upside down. Go to the side a little bit. The uh, other way, other way. Right there. Okay, that looks really, really beautiful. <laughs> Just That's really nice. Okay, I I did a a chicken. Chicken, you came up with your own. Yeah, I looked on I looked online and I saw this. Oh, that's cool. And I did a turkey. Okay. Put your turkey closer. I want to see the face. Okay. That looks really, really nice. What what medium did you all use to add the color? Uh, Crayola, those markers, Crayola markers. Markers, okay. That's really cool. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Anybody else want to share some of their fun, calm creations? So last week when we were creating the fun palm art, of course, I just had a long week and I didn't get a chance to finish any of mine, but this, this is what we created. We did an octopus, an ear of corn, which I do plan on adding backgrounds and finishing. We did a mouse and a penguin. So if you all drew any of those pieces, please add them to your portfolios. And thanks so much for all of your questions, suggestions, and your show and tell. Anybody else have anything they wanted to say? If not, thank you so much. I love your beautiful backgrounds. All of that beautiful color is so artistic and it's, it's inspirational. Um, Thank you so much for joining the acronym M Soon, making something out of nothing. It's a class all about recycling, finding those objects that some people turn uh, into treasure, which you would normally think was trash, and making something very beautiful to uh, actually give to someone or uh, put in an exhibit. Uh, there are so many things that you can do with these beautiful crafts that you're making. And we'll see you next week with the probably the last portion of our lady sculpture. My name is Kimberly Wright. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Thank you. Peace.